He's a big boy. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, the Predator Assassin Predator Deluxe Action Figure. Predators have been genetically evolving themselves to be stronger, smarter, and more lethal than ever before. When a young boy accidentally activates a mysterious alien device and becomes the target of these enhanced predators, only his father and the most unlikely ragtag band of crazy ex-military agents can save him and the human race from obliteration. Before we get into the review of the Assassin Predator, let's get this guy clocked in. He's going to be, like I said, a pretty big looking figure. But how big is he? Let's stop the tape measure right there. According to the readouts, the figure of the Assassin Predator stands 11.2 inches in height. Told you he was big. Switching that to centimeters, revealing that the figure is 28.4 centimeters tall. I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Assassin Predator that we're having a look at in this review. Unfortunately, at the time of shooting this review, I couldn't find where I put my The Predator figures. So, and for the time being, for some size comparisons, we're going to move over this behemoth. And we're going to bring in a Predator figure that we just recently had a look at. This is the Stalker Predator. It would be safe to say that the Assassin Predator is about a third the height taller than a traditional Predator figure. Like I said, he's pretty big. And along with him being big also means there's some difficulty getting him to stand. So you probably already see right at the beginning of this review that I'm using a clear NECA display stand to ensure that the Assassin Predator isn't going to fall over on me. The figure comes included with six accessories, a swappable head, two swappable hands, and then of course things that you can attach onto his gauntlet, all of which we'll have a look at in a second. The only thing it doesn't come included with, going back to a point I've already made, is he doesn't come included with a display stand. And as you'll see with this particular figure, there is some difficulty getting him to stand because you're dealing with a really big looking figure and you're dealing with a very small footprint. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But let's have a look at the accessories that he comes included with. Currently, he comes with what I could define as being mauling hands currently in the sockets of his forearms. But if you just like punching hands instead, he comes with a pair of closed fists. This is a great opportunity right out the gate to be able to show you guys the detail work that NECA Toys incorporated with just the hands alone. You can also see it's a much different color than the first Assassin Predator that we got. Unfortunately, again, I was unable to find where I put that figure, but the color scheme on that one was more of cooler blues, where you can see here, this one has a lot more earth colors being incorporated, earth tones. And here's a good idea of what the hands look like. Probably never going to really use these hands in all honesty, simply just because when I like the idea of displaying the assassin predator, I want him to look like he's about to rip a predator to shreds. But he, comes, he does come include with those. Then he comes with a couple of things suited for holding in his gauntlets. Actually, for that, I'm going to go ahead and pick the figure up. You'll see right off the bat, I'll show you what I'm talking about. He has a very small footprint. This would be a traditional sized footprint, sure, for a regular predator. But when you're dealing with a predator this size, I really do think like a display stand certainly could have come in handy. Now, I would always advise anyways, if you get the chance and you find these in stores, pick yourself up the 10 pack of these because they do really come in handy not only for just putting your characters in dynamic poses, but certainly in the case of the Assassin Predator, just so he actually doesn't have difficulty standing. You can kind of put him down and balance him off. I mean, it's just a case more so of just getting that right situated stance. But like I said, I mean, it's just a lot easier. Get yourself a display stand. Don't deal with the hassle of trying to get this guy to balance on his own. But what we were talking about before I interrupted myself, is the fact that he does have swappable options available. Why am I spinning the figure around? I'm spinning the figure around because you'll see here on the back of one of his gauntlets, he's got these two little slot points right there. That is because he comes included with his large gauntlet blade. And you can see it's been nicely done and painted in silver. These little tab points right here, one and two, fit into the groove slots right here, one and two. They don't actually have numbers. I was just saying one and two. Well, you can see it fits perfectly fine in his hand or in his arm, I suppose. The other thing he comes included with is spinning it around to the other side. You'll see there's a peg right there. Well, he comes also included with a little blaster, a little gauntlet blaster that just pegs into place like that. Now, what's neat about this is that it does have posability to it. So it hinges here 
and it hinges right here. So you can actually move this back and forth. The thing about it though, as I almost, almost did it, be careful that you don't lose that. Be careful that you don't also lose the next thing I'm about to show you. It comes included with a little cap cover, which is basically just a folded up version of that gauntlet blaster. And just plug that into place like that. Actually, I think it goes the other way. There we go. Spin it around like that. Perfect. So he does have that as a little protective cover just to finish it off and make it look like it's it's obviously not missing a big hole in the middle of it. So he does come in clue with that. Of course, I can only stress this several times already. Be careful with these smaller pieces, especially this one and especially the little blaster. You don't want to be losing those. And obviously with such a small hole like that, it is possible that if you pick and move the figure up from one place in your collection to another place in your collection, I'm just showing you the gestures of doing that, it is possible that, yeah, one of those things could fall off and land on the floor somewhere. So just be careful. The last thing he comes included with, I suppose we'll just pause for a second and not actually look at just yet, because I want to show you guys first the head sculpt that comes with the figure when you get him out of the box. I would certainly recommend if you guys get the chance, go back to my original review of the Assassin Predator and you'll see the color scheme that original figure was. A lot of cooler blues and purples were incorporated into that figure. Whereas here, I feel we have a much more screen accurate look to this Predator with incorporating more of the warmer yellows, the greenish grays that they've put here on the torso, for example. Not to mention all the stripes that they put across the plastic of this figure. It's got some really great looking coloring here. I just spin this around. But quickly showing you guys the head sculpt here. This one does have the closed mandible mouth. There's something about the personality on this particular piece. It's got some really rich looking details that are done on the top crest of it. And of course, like all the other predators, he had the dreads located here on the back. Slightly coarser looking dreads than perhaps somewhat that we're used to seeing. In this case, also the little ringlets seem to be more darker bronze color or copper color versus the traditional gold that we're used to seeing. Now of the two, I prefer, I'm going to for this, take this off because I don't want to lose this. I'm actually going to go here and pull this off as well because I just feel like those would be things that would be lost if I'm not too careful. As I said, he does come with an alternate head sculpt as well, which would be this one right here. Oh, now see, now we're talking. I love this head sculpt quite a bit. You can see, of course, the very large open mouth in this instance. The eyes don't really change too much, nor does the rest of the head. Where all the real drastic changes comes with the one, the, the more the mouth on this one. Quite a big jump when you compare it to the defaulted head sculpt that comes with the figure when you get it out of the box. Now, of course, to swap the heads out, I'm going to put this head sculpt down for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and grab this head sculpt here. It's a lot larger than you know, what you're normally used to seeing with these Predator figures. And I'm just going to wiggle it off the ball joint. Now, it's difficult. It's not necessarily a case where the post, as you can see, it's a generally small post. But I think it's just the fact that I really have to reach down on there. Because as you can see, the post sits really far up into the back of the head. Right there. To swap it out, though, with the other one, we're going to go ahead and just do the exact same thing in reverse. Just line it up to the peg hole right there. And I will say that this does involve a little bit of extra pressure. The first, first couple of times you do this, you may notice that it's a bit tight. What I certainly would recommend, if you get the opportunity, take a hairdryer and just heat the inside of that hole. I've already done it, but I almost feel like I need to do it again just to see if you can soften up that plastic. Once it's soft enough, it should put on it go should go onto the peg a lot easier than what it actually does. Like I said, I did do it already before this review, but I feel like I may have to do it again just to see if I can open up that socket hole just a little bit bigger so it can actually fit properly onto his head here. Stepping away from the camera and taking my own advice for a second, I actually went and heated that hole just on the bottom of the Predator's head. Even though I had done it before this review started, I felt maybe a second pass with it probably would have helped, and sure enough, it did. So once that's in place, like I said, you've got the head moving up and down perfectly fine, not falling off. We'll talk a little bit more about the posability on this guy in a second. But one last look at that alternate head sculpt. It shows really well from the side, I might say. And just reaching to the side, speaking of the side, to show you guys the difference again between the two head sculpts. 
I don't know if I had actually said it when we first had a look at the Assassin Predator, but there's something about the defaulted head sculpt with the closed mandibles that reminds me of a bulldog. I see it even more here, I think, when the coloring is slightly changed. But the coloring on both the cases, as you can see, the airbrushing of the darker color against the backdrop of that beige really does stand out. And all the details that they did add in the black, boy, do they ever really pop on this particular figure. I really kind of wish I did have that other Assassin Predator with me in front of me so I could do the comparison side to side. So I would say again, if you get the chance and you want to know what the, other, the original one looked like, just check out my first review of it. It's again, really going the route of more blue colors, whereas this one is very, very different. The striping on this one specifically is one thing that I find really stands out in this particular figure in a really good way. And hopefully camera is doing this proper justice of showing you guys just the immaculate sculpt work that NECA's artist actually put into this figure. The little bumps and ridges and little spikes sticking out from the skin all look really good on this particular figure. He doesn't really have any armor to speak of, short of the gauntlets here on his arms, for example. Traditional predators normally have something adorning the top of their torso. Assassin Predator doesn't need that. He literally just goes in there, rips you to shreds. Spin it around to the back so you guys can see the detailing on the back of the figure. Even like the beige gets afforded just a little bit of darker color, as you can see, has been airbrushed here. Things like the spine, for example, really stand out when you add just that right amount of that darker shaded color. Of course, he's got his loincloth going on here. Very tight quarters close to his lower torso. Um, very small as well, whereas most predators tend to have a slightly longer loincloth. All the detail work added in there as well. A very dark colored plastic painted nicely here with a more matte silver. But again, it's like all these little spikes. You could spend a lot of time, at least I spend a lot of time, just admiring this figure for the amount of work that they put into the sculpting of it. All the spikes you can see sticking out here. Uh, it does translate admittingly when you are picking the figure up and holding it in hand. There are a few little times that I've picked this figure up and sort of pulled away because I felt like the spikes sticking against my skin. I like the fact that they controlled the real tightness of these stripes. You can see on the back how close the stripes are to one another, and there's all these nice little spotted effects that they've also added to the paintwork as well. All translate again to a really stunning looking figure. Now again, the difficulty comes to this figure, it's just obviously based on the design of the way he looks in the movie, is these hind legs that he has. He only has a very small footprint, as you can see, with some really neat looking spikes sticking out. But the problem is that the footprint is so small that it obviously is going to cause problems. The fact that you're you're dealing with so already a really tall looking figure, big in the torso, and really generally heavy up top. And then you're putting so much of that on the hopes that these tiny little feet will be more than enough to hold it in place. And like I said, you can kind of, you can also bend the knees as well, which of course we'll talk a little bit about when we look at the articulation on the figure. Bending the knees I find helps just a little bit to kind of compensate for the figure's stance. And again, you can kind of get it just in a right balancing pose, but I find a lot of times he just doesn't seem to hold a stance. Just when I think I have it, I step away or I turn away, I find the assassin predator ends up falling over. So I really would suggest use a display stand do yourself the service and really avoid the hassle of trying to get the stand guy to stand properly. I mean, the peg holes are there for a reason. NECA Toys also releases clear display stands for a reason. Use those two things, those two things in front of you and actually attach a display stand to the bottom of the figure. And then at least you'll guarantee that the assassin isn't going to fall over. Shall we run through the articulation on the assassin predator? And for this, I'm decided just to keep the open mouth because it's my favorite of the two. The head rotates back and forth, it moves up, it moves down, and you can also rock it back and forth this way as well. Again, if you have any issues, I know I already said it a couple of times already, if you have any issues popping, replacing heads in and out, just use the trick of either submerging in hot water, or again, some people like to use just a hairdryer, just heat that area of the socket, and then when you pop that onto the ball peg, it should easily fit in place. I actually had to do it again twice on this figure just to get the head properly rooted. But at least it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to fall off on me. So go that route if you have any difficulties. As for the arms, now the arms are going to be a little bit more difficult just by the sculpting of the figure. There's really no way around it. He does have a hinge joint, you can see right in there. And it does allow the arms to hinge down and up. But 
That's about as far up as I can actually get the figure. Obviously, the one thing going against this figure is the sculpting of the shoulder. There's really, again, no way around it. By the size of this tortoise shell sculpt that they put to the shoulder, it really does limit possibilities for being able to move the arms outward. You can kind of compensate it by bringing the forearms out, kind of giving you a slight look that he does, he can pull off like a 45 degree angle bend, but that's as far to the extent that I can actually get the arms to bend outward. And it's just because he's got so much sculpting going on right here and right here as I point back and forth. But you can move the arms all the way around. There's, there's no problems there whatsoever. He has a double hinge on the elbow, one and two. And you can also rotate. I love these hands. I know I didn't spend nearly enough time really talking about just these hands alone. I, I just love the fact that you know that's going to destroy something. Some poor predator is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. And these giant mauling hands are just going to rip it to shreds. Cool looking hands. But the hands do rotate all the way around, and you can also hinge them back and forth as well. There's a little hinge joint you can see. Maybe you can see right there. He has an upper torso ball joint. He also has a lower torso ball joint. It seems like the lower torso works a lot easier than the top torso. It could also be the fact that there's a lot more plastic going on here, especially when you look at the sides of his torso here, that he doesn't have as much going on here in the lower half. It just seems a lot easier to rotate it this way. Then for his legs, as I'm also bringing out the legs, I don't know if you can hear it or not. Oh yeah, you probably could hear that quite easily. He does have ratcheted joints in his legs. So nice, tight joints. Certainly will guarantee that the figure is not going to develop loose legs over time. The legs move forward, the legs move back. Doesn't really swivel at all, but he does have a double hinge on the knee. Just really tight on this figure. But there's one hinge, and then the second hinge is right in there. And then of course, when we look at the feet, now the feet are going to be very similar to, not quite similar, but close enough to like a xenomorph in the sense that it, it does have kind of like the arched leg, like this. He does have a hinge where it allows the hind leg or the, the front of the foot to move back and forth this way. And then he also has a hinge joint. I'll just show you here. There's a hinge joint up and down this way, and you can also rock the toes back and forth. That should be enough to be able to get the figure to stand, but again, the real difficulty is the fact that just the size of his footprint, it would be certainly nice if I can actually get this guy to stand properly just for either closing. There we go. Like I said, just to show you guys, he does have the capable means of being able to stand on his own. I'm not necessarily disputing that. But again, you have to kind of get that proper sweet spot going on with the proper angle placement of both his ankles, as well as his knees, as well as his thighs, to get everything to balance off. If you really just want to avoid that at all costs, by all means, use yourself a display stand. I don't feel like it's cheating using yourself a display stand. That's what they're there for. And certainly when you deal with a figure as big as an assassin, you really don't want this guy falling off a shelf. That's the last thing you really want. So use yourself a display stand, pose this guy the way that you'll want, and you've got yourself one fantastic looking Yaucha to put on display with the rest of the slightly smaller predators that Naked Toys have also put out. I never really had a problem with the original Assassin Predator that NECA Toys had released years ago. It was big, oversized, it was a lot bigger than the Fugitive Predator the way it should be, after all, in the movie. The Assassin Predator just overwhelms that Fugitive Predator. And I really did praise, when we first got that Predator, how big and incredible it actually looked on display. It just goes to show, with a second helping, a second opportunity, and NECA Toys going back to the drawing board when it comes to pain applications, do we actually feel, I feel at least, we get a superior looking Assassin Predator with their second go around. Now again, when you compare the two side to side, it's almost night and day. The other one had the more bluer colors. Here we have, I feel, more earth tones, a little bit closer to the way it looks in the movie. The Also the opportunity with going the lighter colors that we got with this release also gives them a good chance and opportunity to really enhance those features on the figure by adding some much needed additional airbrushing. And it really does allow the musculature on this particular figure to really pop and stand out. I don't think much changes in the way of the accessories. Still has the swappable heads, still has the swappable hands, and still has the swappable accessories that go attached to his gauntlets. So really what you're getting here is just an upgrade, an improvement, more so cosmetically. Not so much, I believe, by the way it was constructed. Sadly, unfortunately, during the course of this review, I really wish I had had that original Assassin Predator, but much like many of my other Predator figures that I don't put on display immediately, they're relegated to a tote somewhere. 
And if I can see if I can find that original Assassin Predator, because I know I still have him, I'll do a follow-up video and I'll compare the two. Or what you can also do as well is just go back and watch my original review of that Assassin Predator. And you'll really see the differences just a little bit of paint actually makes. This isn't the first time, of course, NECA Toys goes back and re-releases or reissues a figure with brand new coats of paint. They've done it with a lot of their Friday the 13th figures as well. And it just goes to show when you go back and reapproach the same figure that you had put out years ago, can really you can see some real vast improvements with this one versus the one that we'd gotten before. For your video question for today is what did you think of the Predator movie? I personally didn't like it at all. I think it was really silly. I think it was over the top. And I don't really like the idea of predators uh, changing their DNAs, giving us oversized monster predators. I think that's a little over the top. Needed to scale that down, I think, a little bit. But let me know down below in the comments section what you guys thought of the Predator movie. I'd also like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of the new V2. Would it be the version 2 Assassin Predator? It looks really great, though. A big thank you again to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Assassin Predator that we had a look at in this review. Hey now, if you're new to this channel and you're liking all the content you're seeing, perhaps the first video that you stumbled onto this little small channel, Oh Mine, was maybe the Assassin Predator, then welcome. Come on in, new subscriber. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, new subscriber. Make sure you turn on that bell notification, new subscriber. And make sure you come back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when we always have new videos popping up. And speaking of which, speaking of new videos, there's going to be a whole ton of new NECA reviews lined up and also coming your way as well. So there's always new stuff to be checking out on a weekly basis. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.